Right to Life March brings thousands into Pittsburgh in near freezing temperatures today, while police in Cranberry Township have uncovered a stolen car ring that did a hefty business. These stories and more coming up next on Steel City News. Wayne Rogers is Michael Stone. I want to feel alive all the time. Nothing can satisfy his craving for new thrills. In Irwin Shaw's The Top of the Hill. Premiering January 27th on Channel 11. Michael Stone is young, rich, and successful. I leave my heart at home every morning. But it's not enough. I want to feel alive all the time. He's pushing himself to the limit, chasing the thrills he craves. Living on the edge, that's what it's all about. Irwin Shaw's spectacular saga set against the excitement of the Winter Olympics. Wayne Rogers is a man obsessed with constantly challenging death. You really want to kill yourself. The Top of the Hill, premiering January 27th on Channel 11. Your Steel City News Station, Channel 11, WIIC-TV, Pittsburgh. Now, Hank Bachman, Dave Sullivan on sports, and weather with Pat Finn. This is Steel City News. Hello, I'm Hank Bachman. Saturday night, Elvis Presley's doctor gets sentenced today by a jury of his own peers, the medical profession. Steeler madness and unheard of confidence about tomorrow's game, that keeps the city of champions buzzing. But the big story on Steel City News tonight, an accident on the Parkway West puts two in the hospital very badly hurt. Details are still sketchy, but about 7 this evening, a car rammed the rear of a tractor trailer near the Robinson Township interchange. Life flight helicopters were called in to fly two Bridgeville residents to Allegheny General Hospital. Tonight, Charles Lemon is in critical condition, his wife Janet serious, in the hospital's trauma unit. No word on the truck driver's condition. That smash-up still under investigation by state police at this hour. A one-car accident takes the lives of two men. Dead tonight are Robert Sasserak of Periopolis and Walter Burkhodel of Star Junction. Both passengers in a car driven by Wayne Morris of Star Junction. Police tell Steel City News Morris sped through a stop sign on Route 51 in Periopolis. He then couldn't make a bend in the road, hit a pole, and split the car in half. Sasserak died after he was thrown from the vehicle. Burkholder also dead at the scene, pinned in the twisted wreckage. But driver Morris was treated for minor injuries and released. County homicide detectives have two investigations on their hands tonight. One involves a local murder. In Sharpsburg, investigators are searching for clues and a motive in the slaying of a 65-year-old innkeeper. Genevieve Curley was found dead this morning behind the bar of the Reliance Hotel. The cause of death, multiple stab wounds. County homicide detectives are tight-lipped about the case. They aren't saying whether or not they have a suspect at this time. And in Churchill Borough, a shooting puts a man in the hospital, Robert Glick of 2402 Marbury Road is in critical condition tonight at the Columbia Health Center. Details there are also sketchy, but we do know Glick was shot a number of times. After spending several hours on the scene, Steel City News could get no information on why or how Glick was pelted with bullets. In Butler County, police have broken up a major auto theft ring with a value of car parts running into the six figures. Ken Meese has the story. For the past six months, 25-year-old John Corelli and his 22-year-old wife Kathleen have rented this Cranberry Township farm about five miles west of Mars off Route 228. Recently, police went to the farm with a search warrant looking for stolen furniture. They found in plain sight hundreds of pieces of dismantled vehicles. Another warrant led to the arrest last evening of the Corellis. So far, they found the remains of, or parts of 10 vehicles, including trucks and automobiles, and miscellaneous other items and uh, total value at this time is about $100,000. Craig Woods of Carnegie was the owner of one of 10 trucks and cars identified at the farm. They find a part of my truck down close to West Virginia. They find a serial number, so they asked me if I could get up early this morning and notify it, and I come up, and it looks like my truck, and then they find my license plate, and then my name I had printed on a, win on a back window, so that pretty well made it my truck. Tracks indicate Corelli apparently drove the stolen trucks onto the farm through the fields, thus avoiding the local highways and neighborhood suspicion. Each auto theft felony conviction carries a possible seven-year jail term. There seem to be a specialization in Ford trucks, but if you're missing a red Firebird, from Cranberry Township, Ken Meese, Channel 11 Steel City News. It'll be about a week before a federal judge decides if Congressman Daniel Flood is mentally fit to stand trial. The 76-year-old Wilkes-Barre lawmaker is accused of taking more than $50,000 in bribes. Five days of hearings about Flood's competency to stand trial ended today. If the judge says Flood has all of his marbles, he could go to trial February 25th on the bribe charges. 
A survey by an abortion rights group shows a solid majority of American voters believe abortion should be legal in at least some circumstances. In a National Abortion Rights League survey, the numbers ran something like this. 64% of voters said abortion should be legal in certain cases. Only 19% said it should be legal in all cases. Also, two-thirds of those polled also said if the government continues paying for childbirth for the poor, it should pay for abortions for them. But those with the opposite viewpoint on abortion gathered in downtown Pittsburgh, some 3,000 strong today. This was the second annual Greater Pittsburgh March for Life. Anti-abortionists from around the state took part in the protest, many of them carrying banners and red roses, the emblem of the march. Other activities today included a prayer breakfast and a pro-life rally. The event is sponsored by 31 pro-life, religious, and civic organizations. And today's demonstration is a warm-up for a national march in Washington this Tuesday. What is called a small amount of radioactive steam leaked into the air at the Shipping Port nuclear plant today in Beaver County. Duquesne Light says the malfunction was immediately detected and the equipment shut down. The incident lasted for about two minutes. The company says residents living near the plant and plant personnel were not exposed to dangerous levels of radiation. Shipping Port is undergoing refueling and maintenance. It's been out of service since November. Next on Steel City News, our ambassador returns to Moscow. The former Supreme Court Justice Douglas is remembered. Tomorrow's the last day of Monroeville Mall's winter sidewalk sale. Don't miss the biggest sale event of the season. Shop Sunday, noon to 5, and save. If you're an extra effort person, you may not always take the time to eat right, but you can make the extra effort to supplement your diet with new Orbe C800 Plus Iron, the extra strength vitamin B complex and C formula. Our new Orbe C800 is stronger than before with 800 milligrams vitamin C and stronger in four essential B complex vitamins. New Orbe C800 Plus Iron for women or Orbe C800 for men. Our extra strength vitamin formula for extra effort people, Orbe C800. Nearly everyone will be watching or listening to the Super Bowl tomorrow, and that should include the 50 Americans still being held hostage in Iran. The captors have said the hostages would be allowed to listen to the game. American reporters have now been thrown out of Iran, and other sources today said some 20 Iranian Air Force officers were arrested for plotting to overthrow the Ayatollah. Russia says it has no designs on the oil fields of Iran, and that's not why Soviet troops invaded Afghanistan. Nonetheless, the Iranians are alarmed over the number of troops and tanks Russia has placed at the Iran-Afghanistan border. And like Iran, we'll have to depend on foreign journalists for news out of Afghanistan because American reporters have now been expelled by the Soviet-controlled government there. Government agents check to make sure that all American journalists were leaving the country today. The government accused the Americans of interfering in its internal affairs and for biased reporting. Many were happy to go. Some had been arrested and subjected to lengthy interrogation. A few had been shot at by Russian soldiers. As expected, the Afghan people were polite. Some even said they were embarrassed by their government's decision. Although journalists were kept under house arrest, for the past two days you could still hear a few explosions in the distance. Government officials and Western diplomats denied a report that there was fighting going on in the city. Diplomats suspect the blasts were made by Russian tanks or perhaps artillery, but said they didn't believe it was anything serious. The Russians are now in control of the major cities in Afghanistan, but so far have not attacked the insurgents, who are said to control some rural provinces. The speculation here is that the Russian troops will be in this country for a long time. It is said they need to resupply and retrain the Afghan army so that they can be trusted to support the new government and take on the Afghan rebels all by themselves. Western diplomats suggest that that will take a long, long time. Keith Miller, NBC News, Kabul. U.S. Ambassador Thomas Watson returned to his post in Moscow today, and he used the occasion to say that he feels Americans are more upset by the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan than by any event in the past 20 years. Watson had been pulled out of Moscow January 2nd to fill Carter in on what was happening. This is also seen as one of the president's ways of showing the Soviets how angry the Soviet rush into Afghanistan made the White House. The president, meantime, is moving to try and get grain shipments off congested docks. The International Longshoremen's Association has refused Carter's request to load three million tons of grain bound for Russia. That makes the already congested market worse. And so the president has told the Commodity Credit Corporation to go into local markets and buy up corn. All will be held indefinitely in warehouses. Carter aides say something had to be done to get the docks clear for other shipments. Former Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas died today at the age of 81. 
Douglas had a passion for hiking, camping, and freedom. President Carter said he was a lion-like defender of individual liberties. He was justice for 36 years longer than any other man. He was named to the high court at the age of 40. He wrote 20 books, married four times, and because of his liberal views was the target of two impeachment attempts. His final public appearance was last year at a dinner honoring him in Washington. William O. Douglas, the former justice for 36 years, dead at 81. Elvis Presley received far too many prescriptions for drugs, both uppers and downers. That was the finding at a hearing that has cost Presley's doctor temporary loss of his license. Here's more. Dr. George Nicopoulos was found not guilty of unprofessional conduct and gross malpractice. But the Board of Medical Examiners found him guilty on 10 counts of improperly prescribing drugs, including thousands of uppers, downers, and painkillers for Elvis Presley. There were tremendous amounts of narcotics that uh, were written prescriptions for, uh, for this patient, and there was absolutely no records kept of what happened to these drugs. But board members said there was no evidence that Nicopolis was responsible for Presley's death or that he practiced bad medicine. He had simply been careless. It's obvious to me that Dr. Nicopolis' patients love him, that uh, his uh, fellow colleagues hold him in high esteem, that he is a reputable physician, practicing for the most part good medicine, so instead of revoking Nicopolis' license, the board merely suspended it for three months and put him on probation for three years. The doctor had no comment on the decision. Dr. Nicopolis is still the subject of a criminal drug investigation being conducted by the local district attorney. And still unresolved is the question of what part drugs played in the death of Elvis Presley. The official cause of death is listed as heart disease. But the doctors who performed the autopsy on Presley reportedly disagreed with that conclusion and said the death was drug-induced. The Presley family has never made the autopsy report public. Ken Lee Jones, NBC News, Memphis. Next on Steel City News, a Satellite 11 report from Sam Nover with a bit of California music, sunshine, and City of Champions Madness. And he'll be here too. After working with these kids, I need a good meal. In Long John Silver's Fish and More Dinner, you get two crispy fish fillets, golden fries, crunchy hush puppies, and fresh coleslaw. Fish and more for less than you think. Now that's what I call a meal. Long John Silver's Fish and More, only 209. Now we go to our Satellite 11 report from Sam Nover at Steeler headquarters in Newport Beach, California. Thanks, Hank and David, very much. And welcome back once again to the Newport Beach Marriott Hotel, the Steeler headquarters, for the final time. In fact, during the course of this week, obviously, we hope you've enjoyed the live reports via satellite that have come your way, the, re the live interviews that we've had with the football players each night right here on Steel City News. One of the interesting things uh, that has happened during the course of this week is that there has not been much news at all. Steve Corson is the only Pittsburgh Steeler that we do not expect to play. We have been told, in fact, that he will not play. But as we have mentioned to you all along, it has been a week absent and devoid of the controversy that has inundated previous Super Bowls that the Steelers have played in, vis-a-vis -vis the Dallas Cowboys. It should be an interesting football game, and we have taken some of the highlights of this week and put it to music so that maybe you can better appreciate exactly what's happened here in Southern California. Round, round, get around, I get around, yeah, get around, round, round, I get around, I get around. Car, 
Cause it's never been beat And we've never missed yet With the girls we meet None of the guys go steady Cause it wouldn't be right To leave your best girl home On a Saturday night I get around And so that just about does it from Southern California. I would be terribly remiss if I didn't tell you the pictures that you have seen all week long and the hard work that has been done behind the cameras. Two men have taken care of that for us. Ron Bonar, our cameraman, and our engineer, Barry Taylor, who have done yeoman service all week long. Our producer has been Dee Thompson. And from this four-man crew in Southern California, go get them, Steelers. We'll see you back in Pittsburgh on Monday night with a fourth Super Bowl championship. Good night, everyone. Back to you, Hank. Right, Sam, and it's a great job by Nova, too. It's tough to work when you get no sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess so. And another Saturday Night Sports, here's Dave Sullivan. Yeah, the game's not far away, but with us some college basketball tonight on the road. The Pitt Panthers struggled just a little bit, but finally won over Evansville by 8 points, 78 to 70. That's Pitt's 11th win of the season. Duquesne knocked off West Virginia this afternoon at the Civic Arena by 7, 73 to 66. The Dukes now are 11 and 3, the Mountaineers 6 and 8. West Virginia was leading by eight points in the first half. The Dukes, though, battled back and tied it by the end of the half at 32. With a couple of fast breaks late in the game, Duquesne pulled away to win by seven. B.B. Flannery with 14, Bruce Atkins 12, five Dukes in double figures. Penn State won its fourth in a row. They down Rutgers 75 to 66. Villanova by 14 over Penn. And an upset Old Dominion edged previously unbeaten and third-ranked Syracuse 68 to 67. Syracuse had led Old Dominion in the game played in Norfolk, Virginia by as many as 13 with five minutes to go. Ron McAdoo got eight of his 21 points down the stretch. Old Dominion now gets four shots as the buzzer is about to go off. It is finally tipped in with one second to go. That's how they won over Syracuse. Notre Dame beat UCLA 80-73. Kentucky a big winner over Vanderbilt and Temple beats LaSalle 67-62. The wild game in the Civic Arena tonight. The Pittsburgh Penguins and the Edmonton Oilers are still playing in the third period. It is 4-2. to two. Now, that game should have been over about an hour ago. But it, as we said, has been wild. There was a 50-minute benches-clearing brawl. Eight players were ejected. 255 minutes and penalties have been handed out. 20, major, or 20 minors, 7 majors, and 13 game misconducts. Good Somebody's Lord. not behaving. A 50-minute brawl? Yes, they just... Said to have not playing, playing hockey. Not playing no. hockey. <laughs> Don't play hockey. Let's fight. Three. Thank you, Dave. Yes, I will. Well, it's Super Bowl Eve, and Steeler Mania running in a near frenzy. Ken Meese found more evidence of the power of positive thinking in a quick trip downtown today. The risk of taking a Steeler win for granted, Gimbel's department store put 600 T-shirts on sale that already proclaimed the Steelers as Super Bowl champs 9, 10, 13, and 14. It took less than three hours for the supply to dwindle. So don't you have the feeling that that might end up being a useless shirt? No, there's no question about it. They're going to win. The problem is by the point spreads. what I'm worried about. Didn't you think as a buyer you were taking a gamble? Absolutely not. If we, lo if we lose tomorrow, it'll certainly be a collector's item. And we've sold a great deal of them today. I think everyone in Pittsburgh is very enthusiastic about the victory tomorrow. One store employee told me the fans are so ravenous for Steeler souvenirs that yellow paper with the words Steeler scrawled on it in black crayon would probably sell. It's like a holiday, said still another, with more fun and excitement than even Christmas shopping. Post-game plans for the store are already set. Monday's Post-Gazette headline will be flown to New Jersey, and by Wednesday, thousands of those Super Bowl mugs will be back in town. But those optimistic T-shirts drew the attention today. Now, the logical end of this piece would be for me to proudly model one of these T-shirts, and I'd do that, except they sold them all. 
except for this one on the mannequin, and it's obviously not one of the more popular sizes. From Gimbel's Ken Meese, Channel 11, Steel City News. And up next on Steel City News, Pat Finn with the armchair football weather forecast here in Pasadena. A nuclear nightmare. An Ayatollah shows his stripes. A pontiff discovers America. Man's distant past. The Navy's future. Taxes. Inflation. Cuba. The kingdom of oil. Opera's golden voids. Hollywood's new faces. There isn't a subject under the sun or an issue on your mind that you won't find covered in the pages of Time. For Time is the news magazine that does the homework for your head work. The very real stories of the news that's happening to you. And if you'll try Time now, We'll send you about half a year at half the single copy price. And this brand new 1980 Hammond Almanac free. The Almanac brings you a world of facts. And Time brings you a world of news every week. From Time's revealing cover stories and exclusive interviews to its movie, music, and book reviews. You cover it all. Sports, medicine, religion, science, business. You get it all in the lively writing and colorful pages of just one magazine. Information you won't find anywhere else. News you can talk about, think about, use. Time. It's the news magazine that invented the news magazine. And for more than half a century, it's been the magazine for people who care about knowing. You'll find time useful, too, especially in the critical news year ahead. It will keep you up, tune you in, and take you everywhere. Time's cover price is $1.25, but you can subscribe now at our basic rate of only 59 cents an issue. That's 25 issues for $14.77, and we pay the postage. Just phone this toll-free number to order Time and to get your 1980 Almanac as a dividend. Time is yours for only 59 cents an issue, while the Almanac comes free with your paid subscription. Our operators are standing by. Phone toll-free 800-621-8200. That's 800-621-8200. Remember, time is half the cover price. The phone call and the almanac are free. We know you don't care much about the weather in Pittsburgh tomorrow, so here with the weather in Pasadena, even without a satellite, is our own terrible weather one. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine talking about sunshine and a high in the middle 60s and the middle of January? That's what's going to be oh. in Pasadena. Lots of sunshine. Temperature at the beginning of game time should be about 65 degrees. Who are you rooting for in the game yet? Did you decide? I, I'll wait till tomorrow to make my decision. <laughs> Good idea. They also say that the field might be dried out by tomorrow because of the sunshine they had during the day today, despite all the rain they had during the week. Take a look at our other camera and the national map. I can tell you where that rain came from. It was a low-pressure storm system that moved in, now causing quite a bit of snow in the Rockies, as much as a foot in some areas, and they've got winter storm watches in effect. We even had a little bit of snow activity in the Pittsburgh area today. It was just a trace. It came from an upper-level cloud thing that was sitting on top of us. That since has moved on by, but new clouds have already started to roll in has to do indirectly with this high pressure system bringing some cold air down out of Canada that cold air hits the warmer air that was already around and that creates clouds and even some rain in some areas but we're right on the fringes of those winds so as a result we're just going to see some cloud activity we're going to see definitely colder temperatures at least right on through Monday wintertime temperatures and I can tell you this I learned this in my hedging 101 class in school the, the book that we had in that class was called variable cloudiness the key to being a successful weather what it means is when you don't know for sure, just say variable cloudiness. That covers just about everything. And that's what's really going to happen. We are so close to being on the edge of that. There is a chance of some sunshine shimmering through during the day tomorrow and into the day on Monday. But there's also a chance of the clouds that are around dropping uh, some snow flurry activity on top of us. Either way, it's going to be wintertime weather, but we're going to be in the house tomorrow anyway, so it doesn't matter. Temperatures in the tri-state area all below freezing except for Morgantown at 33. Currently in the Steel City, 28 degrees. That means it's the coldest it's been all day, so it's the low for the day so far. This afternoon's high, 34. Now, if you're not happy about today's cool temperatures, take a look at what you and I had to put up with last year on this date. It was a high temperature of only 26 degrees and an overnight low that hit the single digits. Tonight's air quality isn't too bad. All pollution stations are reporting good or moderate readings. 
Other stats in the Steel City, current humidity 63%, barometer 30.31 and falling. Winds are out of the west at 6, and the temperature under temporarily semi-clear skies is 28. Now here's the forecast. Tonight, variable cloudiness and cold, low in the low 20s. Tomorrow, variable cloudiness and cold, high in the lower 30s. Now there is a change in the forecast for tomorrow night. Instead of variable cloudiness and cold, it's variable cloudiness and very cold. Overnight low in the middle teens. Monday, it's going to be variably cloudy and cold, high in the upper 20s. Then for Tuesday and Wednesday, let's say partly cloudy and a little bit milder, high somewhere in the middle 30s. At any rate, wintertime temperatures right on through the middle of next week and probably into next weekend, Hank. Yes, invariably. Yes, Thank of you. course. Thank you, Pat. Still City News returns with a Super Bowl Eve rediscovery from Jack Etzel. Genesee is believing. It's great to be back in Genesee country, where winter is really fun. The snow, the games, the clean, fresh bite in the air. There's nothing like our winters and nothing like our Genesee. That great Jenny taste comes through every time. We're believers. You can count on Jenny taste, cause it's brewed in just one place. Genesee is believing. If you're a kid, you're gonna like TWA. Because TWA lets you fly all over the US. Free! Just like last year! You have to go with a grown-up, but you don't have to be real little. Like my brother. He's 11. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Tell your parents they can get a discount, too. Work for me. TWA, where kids fly free. You're gonna like us, TWA. What's black and gold wears a funny face and spends the day before the Super Bowl running around Pittsburgh? A Steeler fan with a terrific sense of humor, and Ken Meese found her today in Gimbel's. The woman, who wants to be known only as ELW of Bellevue, says to win a bet, she had to walk around town dressed like this from 7 this morning until 4. We think she deserves the money and the booze, her winnings in the wager. And usually on these Saturday nights, we go back a year or more or two for one of the best editions of Etzel at Large. But on this special Super Bowl Eve, we're going back no more than one week ago to rediscover Jack in a bar in Trafford. Come with me into this bar. You're about to get a look at the other Steeler team. And some guys who, despite what you think you might see, are not wearing helmets. Hidden in the dark depths of this bar in Trafford, a most bizarre event is going on. It's the helmeting, that's right, the helmeting of some of the Steelers' staunchest fans. These are a few of the 11 who agreed to shave their heads, paint the bald palettes with black house paint with yellow stripes, and the steel emblem on the side. This is a clear-cut case of dedication beyond the call of duty. In fact, by the time the Super Bowl is played a week from Sunday, it also may be a clear-cut case of head rash or worse. But meanwhile, for these fans, it's just the spirit that counts. We are the steel, super steel. We're gonna steal another Super Bowl. What kind of pen are you using? Latex. You sure that's all right? I mean, for his head? That's yeah. his problem. Oh, well, we're in a bar, but you guys are all cold <laughs> sober, aren't you? Well, we, we was sober when we started out, but we ain't now. Sid started this uh, three years ago, and uh, we decided to join him this year. You're my model, Sid, since you were the instigator of all this. Turn around. I want to see some of this. That's a pretty good art job on there, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. These artists do a real good <laughs> job. You know, you don't look exactly like Bradshaw. Not quite. <laughs> I thought I was crazy. I remember in high school getting tossed out for a few days for getting a Mohawk haircut because the team was called the Warriors. Well, I'll tell you this, if the 11 Steelers in Los Angeles show up with half the dedication that these 11 here in Trafford, Pennsylvania have, the Rams have had it. <laughs> you guys are nuts. I'm, <laughs> I'm Etzel at large. At least they won't rust. That's the late report of Steel City News. You all have fun tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow at 6. No, you'll be here at 6. Now for Pat Finn and Dave Sullivan and the entire news team, I'm Hank Bachman. Stay with us now for Saturday Night Live. <laughs> The 
Lake Placid Winter Olympic Games form the setting for action and romance in Erwin Shaw's made-for-TV novel, The Top of the Hill, premiering Sunday, January 27th, here on Channel 11. Was this you last night, tossing and turning, pillow propping and punching your way into a comfortable position, trying to sit up and relax or sleep? Your flatbed was just not made to fit the natural curves of your body. This could be why you're uncomfortable. Now there's a bed that automatically adjusts to fit your body's contour. It's the famous Craftmatic adjustable bed. Just press this button and automatically raise your head and back, raise your legs, or both. Enjoy sound sleep, watch TV, read, or just relax. Craftmatic helps to reduce neck, back, and leg strain your flatbed can cause. Craftmatic helps promote improved circulation and can help to relieve tension and fatigue. Available with a gentle, soothing massage in all mattress sizes. Call now for this colorful free booklet describing Craftmatic Adjustable Bed. Call toll-free 1-800-228-2200. No obligation, 1-800-228-2200. Operators on duty right now, 1-800-228-2200.